Hi, it's Keith from E Motors, and today we're covering the steps that I would take to troubleshoot my VFD if it failed. I know I've been stumped from time to time over the years, so I'm hoping this will help you get your variable frequency drive back up and running. I did have one of our in-house VFD experts, Asan, help me with this troubleshooting guide. If you have any other VFD troubleshooting tips, leave it in the comments. Whether you're troubleshooting an ABB VFD or an Allen Bradley VFD, a lot of these best practices will apply. Today, I'm working with a Tico Westinghouse VFD. Reach out to our team at eMotors Direct if you require additional support. Our goal is to help you find the right VFD for your application. VFD troubleshooting can be divided into three broad categories. Number one, catastrophic failure. This type of failure is usually characterized by sparks, arcing, or loud noises, and results in damage to the drive or the connected equipment. It's not recommended to attempt to troubleshoot this type of failure until the root cause has been determined and rectified. It's unlikely that such a failure can be rectified by anyone but the manufacturer or a VFD repair shop. Number two, power loss failure. This type of failure is characterized by a loss of power without any obvious evidence of damage to the drive. For example, the drive is off and unresponsive. And number three, nuisance failure. This type of failure is characterized by a drive that turns on and exhibits signs of life but isn't functioning as intended. For example, the drive stuck in a fault state, the drive won't output power, or the drive won't enter a run state. Of these three types of failure, we'll mostly be dealing with power loss failure and nuisance failure as the catastrophic failure should generally be dealt with by professionals. The only thing that can be done about catastrophic failure is rudimentary root cause analysis. If a catastrophic failure occurs during the first startup, the input power was likely connected to the VFD output or control terminals or not properly specified such as in over voltage condition. If either of these ends up being the case, you can just replace the drive and the system should work as intended if wired correctly. If not, check if there's evidence of moisture in or around the drive or signs of corrosion on the main board of the drive. Next, we'll treat a power loss failure. First, disconnect power from the drive and remove the front cover so you can inspect and rule out catastrophic failures. To rule out catastrophic failure, look for burn marks, bulging capacitors, or signs of smoke or venting. If you do see any of these signs, it's unlikely you'll be able to repair the drive without advanced soldering and board repair skills. Second, check your input is reading the correct voltage and corresponds to the VFD's input voltage. If it doesn't correspond, then you have a problem with your line power coming in. While you're at it, check the resistance between the terminals and make sure it reads in the kilo-ohm range. This will rule out shorted input terminals. Connect your inputs to the input terminals marked L1 through 3, making sure there are no loose connections. If there are loose connections, reconnect them and ensure good contact is established. If power is restored and there are no active VFD fault codes, check the drive manual for a section on fault history and check the corresponding parameter. If there are no recent faults or if the only fault is a low voltage, your problem was likely a loose connection and is now fixed. Visit eMotorsDirect.ca for hundreds of VFD manuals if you've misplaced yours. Lastly, we'll look at nuisance failures. We'll be primarily looking at VFD fault codes. Check for active fault codes. If your drive has a display, it will show an error code. If your drive does not have a display, it'll likely have a diagnostic LED that'll blink or change color according to the error. Check your drive manual for a list of error codes or diagnostic LED states and follow the listed troubleshooting suggestions. If the code or error state persists after attempting to reset, try removing the motor and any control wiring and operating the drive from the keypad. If this works, your drive is fine and you have a problem with your control configuration or motor. If there are no active fault codes, check the fault history as described in the power loss section and treat accordingly. Again, it's worth disconnecting the motor and the control wiring and checking if that clears a certain error. If this is the case, the problem is likely the motor or controls. 
Some drives won't start without a motor connected, so keep that in mind. Some examples of nuisance failure fault codes and common root causes include overcurrent, overvoltage, or parameter error. An overcurrent state is caused by the motor asking for too much current from the drive. This might be caused by an undersized drive, an old motor with increased internal resistance, or the motor full load amps parameter in the drive is set too low. Overvoltage is a condition where the DC bus voltage exceeds rating. This might be caused by high input voltage or the VFT starting while the motor is spinning in the opposite direction. This is common for outdoor fans. A parameter error is usually caused by parameters set to contradictory or unexpected values. Reset drive to a factory setting and see if that fixes it. If you do need to replace your VFT, our team at eMotorsDirect.ca is here to help you find your replacement. I'm Keith with eMotors Direct, your source for motors and VFDs in Canada. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.